because uh, today is my first time. In how many years? Ten. <laughs> no, that's an exaggeration. This is the first time in uh, more than six years that I am meeting the press. So I will act as a beginner. People saw you with President Museveni. And some say you have potential to succeed. Am I rephrasing your question? You have potential to succeed uh, President Museveni. Um, will you listen? Is that the way you put the question, Philip? Will you listen? I uh, really have answered these questions already, I think. Um, today, the purpose of uh, this press conference is to issue a press release on the launch of the African Global Security Foundation. This really was launched on February 13th in Dakar, Senegal. I made a very brief statement as we are leaving uh, because the text that I'm giving you now had been agreed, but we needed to get everyone on board. So now what I'm presenting to you, therefore, is uh, the official one. And the central mission of the African Union and indeed the United Nations, is maintenance of peace and security. This can be accomplished by all parties working together to prevent conflict by creating conditions that allow peace to hold and to flourish. This, in turn, can only be achieved when systems and mechanisms are put in place to determine the existence of threats to peace. The African Global Security has been set up by the founding member states of Congo Brazzaville, Democratic Republic of Congo, Mauritius, Senegal, Togo, and Uganda. It is, of course, open to all African states who subscribe to its objectives and are willing to participate in it. The Foundation will be giving security briefings to member states through their established organs, provide insights to help members make sense of the changes happening in the region and in the world. This will hopefully contribute to the shaping of member states' foreign and security policies in the increasing dynamic environment and help build a safer and more stable region and world. The primary focus of the Foundation will be on member states' security and international affairs and how to improve the safety of the member states. The international order, as you all know, is undergoing far-reaching and rapid changes. We must find our place in the world where competition has become a key driving force. International politics are being rapidly reshaped. We need to have deep insights into these developments and determine how we, as members of the group, can best navigate the fast-changing international environment. The African Global Security will offer decision-makers global, independent, and strategic insights and innovative ideas that advance international peace. We will partly benefit 
from the available information in open sources, from state agencies, and also have a core group of our own, our own thinkers of diverse disciplines and perspectives. The foundation will provide analysis and insight on the medium and long-term security threats and provide ideas on the setting up of autonomous capacity that gives resilience against any external threat as well as protecting and consolidating the members' integrity. The headquarters of the foundation will be Dakar, Senegal. The foundation will also, of course, operate from the capitals of member states. And as we speak now, His Excellency Macky Sall, the President of the Republic of Senegal, has already signed the legal instrument to establish this foundation, of course, in Senegal. The chairman of this foundation is Amama Mbabazi. The vice chairman will be Mr. Jean-Yves Olivier, who will also be in charge of international relations. So I am issuing this in my capacity as chairman of Africa Global Security. Restrict my comments to this press release on the launch of the African Global Security as much as possible. I alluded to the fact that uh, you may not be seeing the last press conference from me. Maybe you are not going to wait again for six years before we hold one. So I meant the other things I'm going to have opportunity to talk about when uh, uh, in the near future. In the future, I don't know whether near or far. The president asked me to lend a hand in uh, the efforts by fellow Africans to resolve the conflicts in our area, especially. And being a revolutionary and a pan-Africanist at that, of course, I agreed to give a hand. So, he offered me, and I accepted, to be a presidential special advisor, uh, special Envoy, not advisor, special envoy on the Great Lakes region, South Sudan, and Ethiopia. And I agreed because I believe in peace. I believe war, senseless war, is something all of us must unite to stop, to bring to an end. And I'm happy to play my part in that effort. Um, I am saying this, I didn't intend to say it, but I, I wanted you, given the questions you're asking, to know that I've been having that interaction and for this kind of reason or purpose. Uma talked about torture and things like that. Of course you know my views about torture. Because torture is, is unacceptable. It is in breach of our law. You know, I belong to NRM, those of you who didn't know it. 
because I subscribe to the principles and the policies of NRM, because, as you know, I substantially contributed to the formulation of this. And one of the things we fought for was freedom for our people. Freedom irrespective of what political opinion you have. We subscribe to the idea of having a peaceful society ruled by law. So that um, we live in peace with each other. Tucha is not a civilized way of doing anything. It was used extensively in Ida Min's time, and we attributed that to their incapacity to do an effective job as a state. And I believe the government of NRM, and certainly NRM, does not subscribe to torture. And I've had government condemn it. Um, and I think they should continue to do so and take strong and effective measures to stop it, if it is happening. Because I am speaking theoretically, not in respect of any particular case, because some of the cases that have been current in the news are in the courts of law, and maybe I shouldn't comment on them. Will I be in Dhaka? No, I'll be here. I may go to Dhaka once in a while, but who asked this Umar Kashaka? I am a modern man. So I can effectively discharge my duties without physically being present at the headquarters. But obviously there will be need once in a while to have um, maybe physical meetings. But this will be very rare. Because these days you can hold meetings. Even this co press conference, we didn't need to have it here. We could have had a press conference using modern methods. Jairus Mohammed asked about uh, leadership of the African Global Security. I, I said that, um, yes, I'm chairman, and there is a vice chairman called Jean-Yves Olivier, and who will be in charge of international affairs. But this is the beginning. We are still at formation stage, and there are others, uh, but we'll announce them in due course. Term limits? Uh, term limits? Who is obsessed with this idea of term limits? <laughs> time limit well, we are going to look at it I think maybe maybe there will be time limits who will fund it uh, well wishers uh, members will be paying a subscription I imagine uh, again we have not finalized this but uh, obviously it will be maintained by its members and well wishers and by the way, we'll be um, happily interfacing and interacting with people in the whole world who subscribe to our objectives, our aims and objectives as well. So thank you very much. Uh, I wish you a happy new year. 
and um, I look forward to seeing you again, hopefully soon.